You're managed by the company, you look after S Club 7, you should look after the Spice Girls, Simon Fuller. Have they tried to mould you and ask you to do things to change the way you look? Yeah, one of them tried to mould me into a big triangle shape and I went, no! 2004. We weren't quite halfway through the aughts. Let me tell you about my boat. But we were deep enough in to realize the world had changed and there would be no going back. No caps! 2003 had been mostly about the build-up to the Iraq War and the subsequent fallout. But 2004 brought with it a presidential election that would allow for a referendum on the U.S.-led invasion. At the same time, it would also see the birth of a social networking site that would change how we all relate to each other online, one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history, and a World Series that the people of Boston would never stop talking about. So, we're going to take you through the news, culture, sports, entertainment, and all that was weird in 2004. This is Timeline. And we're going to take you back a nice round 20 years, because this one is all about 2004. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel, and let us know in the comments below your favorite memory from the aughts. Now, are you ready to see what happened precisely one-fifth of a century ago? Step on it! This is 2004. Isn't we supposed to be having a fiesta? Uno, dos, cuatro, hit it! Number one song in the USA on American Top 40 for the fourth week running. Hey ya, uh, by Outkast. The original run of Casey Kasem's American Top 40 lasted from July 4th, 1970 to January 28th, 1995. But the show was revived three years later and Kasem would continue continue to count off the hits for America for another six years. On January 3rd, however, Kasem would say goodbye for the last time, handing over hosting duties to American Idol host Ryan Seacrest. Rather than feeling sad about uh, leaving American Top 40, I'm happy having done what I did. On January 4th, NASA took one giant leap for mankind when they safely and successfully landed the Spirit rover on the surface of Mars. Spirit would touch down three weeks before its twin, Opportunity, landed on the other side of the planet. Originally planned to be a 90-day mission, Spirit would ultimately stay mobile for 1,944 days and operational for 2,269 days. I'm Garth Marenghi, author, Dreamweaver. I'm Dr. Sanchez. You're a woman. Yes, I hope that's not a problem. Not at all. There's plenty of scared on the wall. This is the 20th century after all, though some don't like to admit it. Welcome to Dark Place, Liz. The My Doom computer worm targeted computers running Microsoft Windows, and it was first detected in North America on January 26th. True to its name, it quickly became the single fastest spreading email worm up until that point in history. Presenting as a poorly written email that was routinely disregarded as spam, My Doom would ultimately infect over half a million computers around the world. Its creator remains unknown to this day. And that same day, Hamid Karzai, president of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, signed the nation's new constitution into law. Drafted to establish a new government after the U.S.-led invasion drove the Taliban from power, the constitution provided for an elected National Assembly and president. At least, it did for 17 years. The U.S. withdrew its military presence from the country completely in September of 2021. And as the withdrawal approached, the Taliban launched an offensive. The nation's security forces quickly collapsed, and the new government and its constitution was terminated on August 15, 2021, when the Taliban took power. February 1st brought Super Bowl 38, but it was the halftime show starring Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake that everyone would be talking about the next day. That's because during a performance of Rock Your Body, Timberlake pulled off part of Jackson's outfit, exposing her right breast. He was to take and rip the piece off, but more came off than what was supposed to. The shot lasted less than a second, but the so-called wardrobe malfunction still led to a crackdown on indecency in broadcasting. If you've seen The Social Network, then you know that when Mark Zuckerberg first launched Facebook on February 4th, it was called THE Facebook. Originally limited to students at Harvard University, the Facebook would prove incredibly popular and quickly expand to other colleges. What is the Facebook exactly? It's an online directory that connects people through universities and colleges through their social networks there. Make a profile about yourself by answering some questions, and most importantly, who your friends are. And by 2006, it would be open to pretty much anyone. On February 10th, Kanye West's debut studio album, The College Dropout, 
dropped to mass acclaim. The album diverged from mainstream hip-hop at the time and touched on more thought-provoking subjects such as racism, religion, and the need for higher education. It also told the story of Kanye's near-fatal accident in 2002 through the track Through the Wire. The music on this CD, I was only the vessel for this. God was in the studio with me. This was my healing process. This was my rehabilitation CD. You're one of my favorite artists, man. You gonna make it, and when you make it, keep the same perspective. The album's success skyrocketed Kanye into stardom, and he remains one of the most famous and controversial recording artists to this day. It's Aunt Em, darling. Well, she seems all right now. We kind of thought she was going to leave us. But I did leave, and I tried to get back for days. You just had a bad dream. Sure. Remember me? Oh, but it wasn't a dream. Only you were blue, and you were red, and you were yellow. <laughs> you were all in color, and all so beautiful. Oh, it was a lot better. Help the M&Ms find their colors. On February 12th, San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom directed the city clerk's office to begin issuing marriage licenses for same-sex couples. Civil unions is separate and fundamentally unequal, but the fact that we've moved that far so quickly is remarkable. When challenged in court, the California Supreme Court overruled Newsom's directive, instructing that clerks had to issue licenses according to existing laws. The roughly 4,000 licenses that had been issued were voided. but. Later legal challenges saw that California Supreme Court in 2008 determined that the state constitution provided for legal same-sex marriage. After being elected as California's lieutenant governor in 2010 and serving in that office for eight years, Newsom was elected governor on November 6, 2018. And on March 1st, Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh's accomplice, Terry Nichols, was convicted in federal court of eight counts of involuntary manslaughter and conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. He would also later be convicted in state court of 161 counts of first-degree murder. While McVeigh was sentenced to death, however, Nichols was instead sentenced to life imprisonment. And the following day, yeah! by Usher hit number one on the Billboard charts. Released less than a month earlier, the track, which featured Lil Jon and Ludacris, would stay in that position for 12 weeks and finish the year as the number one single on Billboard's Hot 100. Also on March 2nd, the Indianapolis Colts would sign their soon-to-be iconic quarterback Peyton Manning to a seven-year, $98 million deal, with a signing bonus just shy of $35 million. It was, at the time, the largest financial offer ever made to play in the NFL. In the early hours of March 11th, the terrorist group Al-Qaeda would carry out a coordinated bombing attack against the Cercanias commuter train system local to Madrid in Spain. The two nearly simultaneous explosions, which constituted the deadliest terror attacks ever carried out in the country, would kill 193 people and injure over 2,000. And in an effort to save lives, on March 29th, the Republic of Ireland became the first country in the world to ban smoking in all workplaces, including bars and restaurants. We all know that smoking is not good for you. We don't advocate smoking as publicans as such, but we advocate choice. The rest of the world took note, and today, the World Health Organization counts 74 countries that have adopted similar bans. Given that it was April Fool's Day, it's understandable that when Google announced Gmail to the world, most people thought it was a prank. The fact that the company made the proclamation in a humorously worded press release didn't help matters either. But as we know now, Gmail was very real. Today, it is the world's largest email provider with over 1.2 billion users. Take that, Hotmail. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty. Oh my god, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. It's so fetch. What is fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. On April 22nd, U.S. Army Ranger Pat Tillman was killed in action in Afghanistan. A professional football player for the NFL's Arizona Cardinals, Tillman enlisted after the terror attack of September 11th, 2001, and became the subject of much media attention. Though he was originally reported as being killed by the enemy, it would later be revealed that Tillman was the victim of friendly fire. By making up these false stories, you're diminishing their true heroism. Everyone should understand what's going on, and we shouldn't be allowed to have smoke screens thrown in our face. 
Then, on April 29th, after 106 years of production, the last car Oldsmobile would ever build rolled off the assembly line at a plant in Michigan. It is the final Alero. It is also the final Oldsmobile. The car was signed by the factory workers before being placed on display at a local transportation museum. And on April 30th, the television news magazine show 60 Minutes 2 reported that American soldiers had been abusing and sexually humiliating Iraqi prisoners at Abu Ghraib, the largest American military prison in Iraq. What if any action is being taken against the interrogators? I hope that that uh, investigation is including not only the people that actually committed the crimes, but some of the people that might have encouraged these crimes as well. Accompanied by graphic photos backing up these charges, the story disturbed Americans and the world at large, helping turn public sentiment against the war. Quiznos. Mm, 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 mm. Toasty. Adios, arrivederci, au revoir. I'll take one, five cameras. Come. After 10 years and 236 episodes, the beloved NBC sitcom Friends aired its series finale on May 6th. This is harder than I thought it would be. Over 51 million viewers tuned in to say goodbye to Ross, Monica, Chandler, Rachel, Phoebe, and Joey. Although it didn't draw as many viewers as the Cheers or Seinfeld finales, the six-time Emmy winner was every bit the cultural phenomenon and turned all six of its leads into stars. Okay, should we get some coffee? Sure. Okay. Where? And Friends wasn't the only sitcom juggernaut to say goodbye in 2004, because after 11 years on the air and 37 Emmys for its cast and production, Frasier also signed off for good. Good night, Seattle. A spin-off of Cheers, the psychiatry-centric Seattle set show, which starred Kelsey Grammer as Dr. Frasier Crane, lasted even longer than the series that spawned it. But even though he had already played Frasier for 20 years, Kelsey Grammer wasn't done yet. And almost two full decades after Frasier ended, Frasier returned in a reboot that streams on Paramount Plus and is currently in its second season. Hello, Frasier. Lilith, dear God. Who looked in the mirror and said your name three times? I got a proposition for you. We could take the funk. We'll be the family funk. What, we can get out on dry land and get out of this place? Yes, sir. Well, let's do it. Let's move. Come on. Just one condition. What? That you take my sweet hand in marriage. Oh, God. And Randy Johnson, 24 up, 24 down. Sports history was made on May 18th when Arizona Diamondbacks ace Randy Johnson became only the 17th pitcher in Major League Baseball history and the seventh in National League history to throw a perfect game. Swing and a miss, and Randy Johnson, at 40 years young, has thrown a perfect game. The win came at the expense of the Atlanta Braves, who took the 2-0 loss in front of their home crowd in Atlanta. I'm Peppa Pig. George wants to jump into the big puddle first. Stop, George. I must check if it's safe for you. Good. It is safe for you. For most people, winning on Jeopardy would be a huge deal. But for software developer Ken Jennings, the big deal was winning 74 times in a row. Who is Tyrone Power? Correct. Jennings' streak, which came shortly after the show had dropped its long-standing rule limiting winners to five appearances, began on June 2nd and didn't end until November 30th. Following the death of Alex Trebek on November 8, 2020, producers announced Ken Jennings would be the first in a series of guest hosts who would help keep the show running while a permanent host was found. Like all Jeopardy! fans, I miss Alex very much. I thank him for everything he did for all of us. That new permanent host would eventually turn out to be Jennings himself, who became the sole holder of the job in 2023, after sharing the title for several seasons with Mayim Bialik. And on June 5th, Ronald Reagan, the 40th president of the United States, died at his Bel Air home after a decade-long battle with Alzheimer's disease. A state funeral service and National Day of Mourning would be held on June 11th, and his casket was ultimately interred at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California. Developed by Mojave Aerospace Ventures without a dime of government money, Spaceship One became the first privately funded vehicle to achieve spaceflight on June 21st. Funding for the ship was provided by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, 
who chipped in somewhere in the neighborhood of $25 million to complete the project. Then on July 1st, legendary actor Marlon Brando finally lost his battle with lung cancer and passed away at the age of 80. Known for his appearances in films like The Wild One and The Godfather, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Brando's career on the silver screen spanned six decades and earned him two Academy Awards. If you had the Academy Awards night to do over again, would you do any of that differently? I felt that it was a marvelous opportunity for an Indian to be able to voice his opinion to 85 million people. Boy, that escalated quickly. Brick killed a guy. Yeah, there were horses and a man on fire, and I killed a guy with a trident. Lay low for a while, because you're probably wanted for murder. And Martha Stewart was still alive, but probably wished she were dead when she was sentenced to five months in prison for lying to federal investigators in connection with an insider trading scandal. Today is a shameful day. It's shameful for me and for my family and for my beloved company. Despite the blow to her reputation and image, however, Stewart was able to bounce back after completing her sentence and continues her successful businesses. Your car's in the parking lot. Here are your keys. Do you realize what the hell we had to go through after you took the car? Yeah, that's why I'm paying for your meal. There's 50 bucks for the burgers and 200 for the car. What happened to my car? I made some love stains in the back seat. August 13th brought the start of the 2004 Summer Olympics, which were held in Athens, Greece, the original birthplace of the Games, and the site of the first modern Games. By the time it ended on August 29th, over 11,000 athletes had competed in 37 disciplines across 28 sports. American swimmer Michael Phelps ultimately wound up on top of the medals table with six gold and two bronze. I love you, but as long as you're with Jessica, there can never be anything between us. Listen, Cassie, there's no need to cry. Besides, I've got really great news. You're leaving Jessica? No. I just saved a load of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. I saved. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. On August 22nd, in broad daylight, two masked gunmen burst into the Munch Museum in Oslo, Norway. While the terrified staff and guests looked on helplessly, the intruders stole the famous paintings The Scream and Madonna. However, in May of 2006, three men would be convicted of the theft. The paintings would be recovered that August, only slightly worse for the wear. Nobody's gonna go out with me. I don't even have any good skills. What do you mean? You know, like... Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. Aren't you pretty good at drawing, like, animals and warriors and stuff? Probably the best that I know of. On September 1st, a group of armed terrorists seized control of a school in the town of Beshlen, North Ossetia, located in the North Caucasus region of Russia. The terrorists operated on behalf of a Chechen warlord who wanted to force Russia to recognize the independence of Chechnya. But on September 3rd, Russian forces moved in to retake the school, resulting in explosions and gunfights that ultimately took the lives of 344 people, 186 of which were children. Baseball history was made on September 15th when San Francisco Giants outfielder Barry Bonds hit his 700th career home run. Bonds hits one to left center field. Let's go back. Number 700. While Bonds' achievements would later be greatly overshadowed by his complicity in the steroid scandals, the feat still put the slugger in an extremely exclusive club, which at the time included only Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. After the master tapes to what would have been their seventh studio album were stolen, pop-punk band Green Day wrote a whole new album from scratch. American Idiot dropped in the U.S. on September 21st and is still widely regarded as the group's masterpiece. And the Grammy goes to American Idiot, Green Day. Green Day. Nominated for seven Grammys, it took home Rock Album of the Year and is now considered one of the most important rock albums of its era. Ten years later, Green Day would give its regards to Broadway in the form of the American Idiot Rock Musical. Originally developed at the Berkeley Repertory Theater in California, the show, co-written by Green Day's Billy Joe Armstrong, would run for 422 performances and win two Tony Awards. The fall brought with it two massively popular TV shows. Please, someone come. The others, they're, they're dead. It's a distress call. Please for help, a mayday. It's been playing over and over for 16 years. 
I was laid to rest on a Monday. After the funeral, all the residents of Wisteria Lane came to pay their respects. You know what I hate? Weeds. They just pop up out of nowhere and you have to work so hard to get rid of them. I find with the right chemicals, you can get rid of almost anything. On October 10th, the world lost a Superman with the death of actor Christopher Reeve, famous for playing the Man of Steel in a series of four movies starting in 1978. Paralyzed in a horseback riding accident nine years earlier, Reeves, still widely regarded as the definitive cinematic Superman, ultimately died of heart failure at the age of 52. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Please. Please call. <laughs> do not sabotage me. If you want to be a f***ing lightweight, then that's your call, but do not sabotage me. Oh, aye, aye, Captain, you got it. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. Oh, no, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any f***ing Merlot! On October 23rd, pop star Ashley Simpson was set to perform live on SNL to promote her debut album, Autobiography. Due to a medical problem with her voice, her label encouraged her to perform on pre-recorded tracks. Ashley Simpson is worried about uh, her losing her voice. The first song went smoothly, but when the second performance began, the wrong pre-recorded vocals were accidentally played. The infamously awkward moment ended with Simpson doing a little jig and walking off stage, and her music career never recovered. What can I say? Live TV. Exactly. I feel so bad my bands are playing the wrong song, and I know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. Multiple generations of Red Sox fans lived and died in the 86 years between the team's World Series victories in 1918 and the one they won on October 29th, finally vanquishing the mythical Curse of the Bambino, alleged to plague the team ever since team owner Harry Frazee traded away Babe Ruth. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. The Red Sox beat the St. Louis Cardinals in just four games. The 55th quadrennial presidential election in the United States was between incumbent George W. Bush and his Democratic challenger, Massachusetts Senator John Kerry. The sitting president would ultimately win both the electoral and popular vote on November 2nd. The voters turned out in record numbers and delivered an historic victory. On November 9th, only months after turning in the manuscripts for the three books that would come to be known as the Millennium Trilogy, Swedish author Stieg Larsson tragically died of cardiac arrest at the age of 50. Those books, The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, chronicled the adventures of journalist Mikael Blomqvist and hacker Lisbeth Zelander, and would all go on to be international bestsellers. The highly anticipated Nintendo DS hit stores in North America on November 21st. DS has a much larger and more relevant meaning, developer's system. In creating DS, we've given the world's most talented game makers new ways to express their imaginations. Pre-orders for the foldable handheld gaming system had been so high, the company had to devote an entire additional factory to their manufacture to keep up with demand. To date, all models of the DS have sold over 150 million units, making it the best-selling portable gaming system of all time and the second best-selling system in history, behind only the PS2. Though it was initially announced way back in 2001, World of Warcraft didn't arrive until November 23rd. Set in the Warcraft fantasy universe, the massively multiplayer online role-playing game was a hit with critics and fans, quickly becoming the most successful MMORPG of all time. By 2014, it would have over 100 million accounts, and by 2017, it would earn over $9 billion. Located near Mio, France, the Mio Viaduct stands at 1,104 feet above ground level and is still, to this day, the highest bridge in the world. Initially projected to open in January of the following year, the bridge was completed ahead of schedule. It was inaugurated on December 14th and officially opened on December 16th. At approximately 8 a.m. local time on December 26th, a massive undersea earthquake struck the Indian Ocean, just off the west coast of northern Sumatra in Indonesia. The quake then caused a tsunami with waves over 100 feet high. Coastal communities in the area were absolutely devastated, and nearly 228,000 people in 14 countries were killed. To date, it is still the single deadliest natural disaster of the 21st century. Rounding out the year with another colossal piece of construction, the Taipei 101 skyscraper located in Taipei, Taiwan, opened its doors as the then-tallest building in the world on New Year's Eve. The 
The Taipei 101 stands at a height of 1,670 feet tall, but it only held the crown for a few short years, relinquishing the top spot to the Burj Khalifa when it completed construction in 2010. Owned by the Taipei Financial Center Corporation, the building still remains the tallest building in Taiwan and the 11th tallest building on Earth. And that's how 2004 ended, with Bush back in the White House, Southeast Asia reeling from an unprecedented natural disaster, and everyone else wondering what was in the hatch on Lost. Weird as things were, we had finally reached the middle of the decade. But that's for next year. Coming soon, 2005. So what do you think? And what was your fondest memory of 2004? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other Timeline videos.